Good evening and welcome to Hard Fire. I'm your host, Joseph Dobrian, here with you for another half hour of discussion of news and current events from a libertarian perspective. But tonight we are going to be talking mainly about the subject of sex education in the public schools. With me tonight are State Senator Velma Nett Montgomery, who represents the 18th Senatorial District in Brooklyn. Yep. And Susan Cleary, who is Executive Committee Woman of the Kings County Republican Party, also here in Brooklyn. Um, I'd like to start with you, Senator Montgomery. You have been in the news lately as the sponsor of a bill called S6205, which is known as the Healthy Teens Agenda. Could you please tell me what that consists of, briefly? Well, yes. Uh, <clears throat> there are a number of colleagues uh, of mine in the State Senate um, all of them Democratic women. Um, we are putting forth what we call the comprehensive teen health agenda. It has three parts. One is the issue of uh, uh, trying to get the state health department, education department, mental health department to come together and, and uh, do a curriculum in sex education, uh, a comprehensive sex education for uh, youngsters in schools from age uh, the uh, levels of first grade through 12th. That's the education piece. Um, the second part of our agenda is we're supporting the what we call the Healthy Teens Act, which would establish a, a funding mechanism uh, which would then allow local school districts to be able to receive funds from the state uh, to help implement the sex education curriculum, actually. And then the third part is we're asking for a major expansion of the school-based health clinic program. Um, we now have a, a, a little fewer than 200 of them in the state. Most of them are in New York City. Uh, but we would like to see that aspect of our health delivery system expanded so that we could capture many more youngsters, especially um, uh, teens um, in our city and in our state, uh, and provide comprehensive health and mental health services for those youngsters. Okay, thank you. And uh, Ms. Cleary, do you uh, approve of any or all of Senator Montgomery's initiatives here? And if so, why? If not, why not? Well, I certainly believe in education. Um, I think first we need to state what the, the problem is. This legislation that you're putting forth is, I believe, what you are seeing a, a crisis amongst uh, and also very young children. It's not just teens that are becoming sexually active Absolutely. Uh, at an inappropriate age, as well as um, there's a lot of sexual predators out there. Right. And children do need to be aware of the dangers that lurk in society and the dangers that can result from certain behavior that they Absolutely. really need to be very um, well supervised and not to uh, and to be um, guided by their parents on these issues. Well, absolutely, and I think <clears throat> for f what we know about what uh, makes for a change, positive change in behavior is that youngsters have to have information. Uh, they have to know what is danger, with, uh, as you have indicated. Um, they need to know, um, for instance, the whole issue of how do you uh, make sure that you don't engage in any behavior that puts your life in danger, um, i.e. contracting sexually transmitted diseases, um, contracting life-threatening diseases like HIV, uh, uh, and um, AIDS. Some would argue that this is not the school's job, that this is the, uh, the, the parent's job and that schools should uh, stay out of it. Uh, Ms. Cleary, do you feel that way or not? Well, I think that it is primarily the parent's job and that even though I'm sure that your intentions are, are very good because it does have to be addressed. This is something that we all need to get very vigilant about because children um, it can be damaged so greatly physically, emotionally, mm -hmm. by uh, you know being involved in basically adult behavior. Uh, that we need to to be 
parents and, and uh, grown-ups here and show them what, what's expected of them, and I think that um, also for their safety. And when they are, are taught this through the people that are closest to them, I think it has the most impact. Now, not every child has that, you know, um, necessarily at their, in their family. So there is a role, I think, for organizations um, a, as well as expanded family members, and that we should make something like this more mandatory for parents, possibly, to get the training that they need to work with their, their children. Um, now, there's an interesting point, and it's one that I'm going to take issue with immediately. Uh, since when does the government get to mandate what sort of education a parent has to go through before they're permitted by the government to re rear their children? Well, they, I think we have man we try to have mandatory parent-teacher uh, meetings. There's all kinds of, uh, you know, incentives that I guess some, I think the Mayor Bloomberg even has an incentive program where parents are paid if they go to... Um, parent-teacher meetings. Really, do we have mandatory parent-teacher meetings? That is, you there you get sanctioned if you don't show up to talk with your children's teacher. I, I don't know what the consequences could actually be, but I think that they make it as a strong, strong recommendation. And if a parent can't come, then perhaps an uncle or an older brother. The children need adult supervision mm -hmm. of people that are close to them. I'm not and, talking about that, though. I'm talking about um, uh, should there be some sort of compulsory parenting classes, which is what you seem to be implying, that uh, parents should be compulsorily educated in the art of parenting. Um, Senator Montgomery, is that something that you would support? Well, uh, I would have to think about that. I'm not sure that I would make it compulsory. That's number one. Number two, I think uh, what parents need is a lot of support um, and a lot of assistance that is readily, immediately available. Um, on all of these issues. Uh, but I want to just mention <clears throat> one thing in terms of um, um, what, why schools should not be involved in uh, sex education. Um, why would you think that they should not be uh, when, in fact, the first thing that uh, a baby learns or one of the first things that they learn is, I, I mean, when they're very, very young, what is your nose? What is your mouth? What is your eyes? You know, you hear parents, and, and they'll say, point to your nose, point to your ears. They start to learn uh, the parts of their body. I, I think Very I see important. what you're driving at. Exactly. And so, so then as they, as they develop uh, and grow, they just need more and more information about their bodies. What is so hmm. wrong with it? Well, uh, uh, Ms. Cleary, would you agree that it's all right to... Um, to teach children just the basic biological facts of life, as they used to be called? I, I'm quite sure they learn it in sixth grade. Most um, curriculum already mm. does a, quite a thorough job in explaining there was a time reproduction. When that was, uh, no, it, as a far as I know, issue. that's pretty uh, ma standard that in sixth grade. And are you okay with that personally? Well, it's already happening, and yes, I think it's important. It's part of life, mm -hmm. part of mm -hmm. science, and I think it's it is the beginning of their knowledge of the understanding, but I think we need to get back to the dangers that face children. And, and that, young adults. And young adults. In particular. Yes, but when you say first grade, this is, I mean, I think well, there's a lot of parents that already give the kind of moral, um, you know, uh, guidance in their homes, and I don't really feel that the schools, I mean, the schools are having a hard enough time teaching children how to read, and that any curriculum or resources should not go away from the most important types of education that the schools are there for. We have schools within a stone's throw of right where we're sitting where only 25 percent of the children read at grade level. Okay. And, and that clearly and, is a problem. Yeah, that's a, and, that's and a question I'd like to... And we need to put our resources into that because the largest danger the, yes, is, is exactly. poverty. Well, uh, that's something I'd like to ask uh, the senator about, and that is... Um, is first grade really a good place to start um, um, teaching about this type of information? I don't personally have a problem with it, but what I do have a problem with is the possibility of uh, teaching values. I think values should be left at home and biological facts perhaps have a place in school. What would you say to that? Well, I think that values come through many sources for young people. Um, and, you know, to, we, we assume that they only get it because we tell them. 
uh, we teach them values. I think we, th to the extent that we live our, our values, uh, and our value system is reinforced uh, based on how we treat them, how we treat each other, uh, what kinds of things we do in society for people, and, and, and so forth and so on. That's how young people, children included, learn values. Uh, I, I believe very strongly in that. So what happens is we try to, you know, we talk about values, but we don't do values. Um, and uh, so, so this, the, the whole issue of, of what, what is sex education? What is, uh, uh, what is the value of your, of your body? Is, is your body a sacred temple? Do we treat ourselves that way? What do they see that exactly. reinforces? Would that, be, would that be taught What in do schools? they see that reinforces a positive attitude about sex as opposed to a negative uh, uh, attitude, i.e., how do we sell toothpaste I'm, with I'm sex? I'm asking you, is how that the kind of thing that you, you want That's to have That's what taught. they see. If we don't teach them that that is not what sex is, they will grow up. That what is not what sex that, is? That how you, you wear the, the, the fewer clothes that you wear, you know, exposing your body in inappropriate ways, um, uh, using your body to sell whatever it is. If that's okay. all they see and we don't give them another uh, uh, perspective in their school that says this is not what okay, so your you're body saying is that, to be used You're for. saying that this, uh, this, we, these values should be taught in schools the, rather than it, at home. The value of your body uh, Ms. Clary, do you, do you agree with that? Yes. I just do not think the schools are equipped to do that. I do not believe that parents want the government to be uh, involved. Who is going to decide the language? These are very delicate matters. They're matters that are really um, people ha have their own ideas of how they want their children to have this presented. And the schools can barely, as I say, do the very basic things that these kids need. What children expect, need to know is that they have a five times higher rate of living in poverty if they have a child out of wedlock. Absolutely. They need to know, as you said, the Absolutely. dangers of HIV. What we really need to teach them, and as parents, I don't know too many parents who want their children to, to engage in, you know, basically we're talking about sexual intercourse. We do not want our no, children but we're to not. be involved you see, in that's sexual the mistake intercourse when because adults that is where the I that don't agree. Not what, an, that's the problem that, that we have. Are I, I respectfully. Ready for. What is the problem that we have? The problem that we have is when adults hear the word sex, they think of intercourse. That's all. But what I'm talking about is the the anatomy of your body that it, and and how it functions uh, well if you treat it well. It won't function well if you don't. And if you engage in certain behaviors, you are. Uh, you 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 are threatening your the life okay. you, you know your own life. I'm with you that That's far. What, so I'm with you I'm that far. But when you were talking, but you were talking fact, before, I don't think it's appropriate Senator, to talk about. I'm Senator, afraid Senator, that I'm afraid hold that it. Hold it. Order. <laughs> I'm the, I'm in charge here. Uh, you were talking before She's messing about up my sex, and I didn't like that. <laughs> we were talking before though about um, um, the inappropriate as you suggested it was messages that uh, kids get from TV Absolutely. about wearing fewer clothes and, and so forth. Else. Is that a value that should be taught in school or is that something that should be left to the parents to discuss with their children? Well, where do we all receive our values? Where are they reinforced? They are reinforced in the environment in which we live, in, and hopefully in the workplace, but certainly uh, in the school. The school, so, the, so, so to say that it's only the parents, the, the school should be, hopefully, reinforcing the value system of the parents so, and of um, the larger society okay. as well. Ms. Cleary, would you uh, agree that the school should be in the business of saying, for example, don't have sex until you are married or until you are X number of years old? Or I do not think, again, that, the, that uh, where do you draw a line? Who is going to come up with this, this curriculum and what is the language going to be? I do not think the government can or should be involved in this kind of a delicate matter. Let them teach the kids what they really need so that they can get jobs. I do think that they need to know, as I say, what have more programs so that they're involved with sports, music, things that are pers their personal growth and development. Absolutely. And yes, they do need yes. to, I agree, know, understand their bodies. I think this is part, could be part of a health class or something that was already there. 
I don't think that there, there needs to be a whole new like government agency designed to to do this. I okay. believe there's a lot of overlap. Now, Senator, you mentioned as your third point, I believe, that you wanted to expand the um, health care facilities that are available to um, public school students. Yes. Uh, would this uh, include the dispensation of birth control devices, for example? Would it include abortion counseling? Uh, would it include psychological counseling if somebody decided he was homosexual? Right. Well, the school-based health clinic programs uh, that we now have, um, some of them provide all of those services that you, you have mentioned. Um, not all of them do. However, um, in order for a young person to be enrolled in a school-based health clinic, the parents must sign off on their participation. So uh, it does require that parents agree that young people have access to this health care. Uh, once they are enrolled, uh, the young people have the right of privacy, which all of us have um, under the federal law as well as uh, uh, the, the, the way that those, the, the clinics function. Um, so a young person can have a relationship with a health provider um, um, as well as a mental health provider um, in their own schools to, to take care of most of the requirements that that young person has. Okay, thank you. Ms. Cleary, do you approve of that? First of all, I'm, I didn't even know that there was health centers yes, health within clinics. school. Yes. Well, if a child is, has a health issue, shouldn't their parent really be going to the doctor with them and being involved with the follow-up care? And if it, then there's so-called privacy, for what age are you talking about? A 12-year-old wants to go, and then the, if she gets a parent that may, to sign off, maybe they don't even know what they're signing, and then the 12-year-old can be dispensed anything that the doctor thinks, and there's not follow-up from the parent? That doesn't seem like that's very appropriate. Well, these most of the clinics, first of all, are uh, under the supervision. On, they're part of a larger health institution. Most of them are sponsored by hospitals. Mm -hmm. Some of them are sponsored by uh, local not-for-profit um, clinics, um, community-based clinics. Um, so they have a backup institution. Um, those youngsters are treated as a regular uh, patients in the larger institution when the school clinic is closed uh, or in, in, if they need uh, service at off hours. Okay. Uh, I'm so interested they, they, also in the issue of birth control. Under your legislation, um, would um, children be taught abstinence is the only proper way to uh, 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 keep from getting pregnant, or would they be taught about uh, condoms, pills, diaphragms, and all those other devices? Would they be taught about abortion and so forth? And would they be told how to, how to get hold of any of these various products or services? Well, uh, <clears throat> thankfully, at least to me, for me, um, the health commissioner announced, uh, I think last month, that we will no longer, the state of New York, uh, will no longer uh, be participating in the abstinence only program. So any um, uh, federal money that um, uh, was coming to the state for abstinence only, we will no longer receive. Uh, now some programs will still have abstinence only programs because they receive federal funds directly. But whatever would come through the state, we will not do it. We had to match those funds uh, with state funds. The funds that would have, be, uh, have been used to match the federal funds will now go, we hope, to expand uh, school-based health clinics as well as to fund comprehensive, uh, uh, scientifically-based sex education. Great. So Ms. Gray, does this make sense to you, or would you oppose it? I, first of all, I think the, the children, even children very low income uh, children have there's free health care as you know we have a program here in New York um, State called health care first or health care plus plus yes um, so Child parents plus. can uh, can access free health uh, insurance and take their children to any doctor in those networks the idea that the schools are now again are not teaching kids to read and now they're dealing with their health issues I think that parents need to take their children to the doctor 
uh, until they're at least 17 or 18 years old, I don't see children going to the doctor on their own. If they need treatment and are seeking out medical help, then these kids need more supervision in their lives. If they're going to the doctor on their own, I would never think of, of a child going uh, to you know, uh, seek health care on their own. Let's talk I'm, about reading and writing skills for a minute. Uh, Senator, um, how do you feel about Ms. Cleary's position that we need to focus not so much on this sort of thing, but more on the three R's? Well, I think we, I prefer to think of children and young people as holistic people with needs both for their health issues, for, uh, especially for their mental health issues. A lot of the young people that we have in our schools um, doesn't matter what income level, doesn't matter what community, they have various personal crises that they have to deal with. There is no one in the schools that, uh, as they are currently situated, uh, to deal, to help them deal with that. Well, and I would submit to you so, that that's so, probably the way it should be. That the so schools should focus on education. So you can't isolate just education. You, you, if you are going to focus on the whole person, the whole child, you invest in that whole child. Okay, but you I, invest in the education. Excellent, but I don't accept well your premise. I don't accept health. your premise that uh, the schools should be concerned with the whole child. I think they should be involved in teaching the child certain facts and skills that he needs to get through life, but not with um, other aspects of his well-being. Well, what about guidance counselors? I think we have guidance counselors in every school, and I think that they are very vigilant, and if they see a child that comes to school with a bruise or isn't, isn't well, I know that they are working very hard to, to deal with children's whole needs because they can't learn if they're not healthy. They can't learn if they're not well fed. Well, now there so is clearly right. I would have I to disagree with, with you because uh, I, went yes, to, uh, right, I went exactly. to a very good high school, a very good public high school in the Midwest, and even there, guidance counselors, I have to uh, say it, were regarded with utter scorn by the, uh, by the students. If we had a problem, a guidance counselor would be the last person we would go to see. Well, I don't think you can, again, make a car. I know many good guidance counselors who, uh, and, and I, I'm sure that there's good ones and bad ones like every other profession, but I do know that there's already an umbrella for children who have their emotional needs uh, that they sit down on a regular basis or especially if there's a, a problem, I think the teacher tells the guidance counselor this child is, uh, seems has under emotional duress or that we have that. And, and as I say, children have access, even poor children, even uh, I understand uh, undocumented uh, families can receive free health care. So no one is without health care in this country. Um, and if a child has a parent or a guardian who is not, help, is not taking care of their health needs, then maybe that child needs to be in another home because that is a basic requirement of a parent. It's not the government. It, and and if, if children aren't in a home that is, seeking, is taking care of those needs, then they have to be, uh, that's another, the another issue. Question, another I could question not I'm very disagree interested. with you more. Okay, and and my value system is that we should take the responsibility as a society to make sure that we create an environment where every young person can grow up healthy and, and see that is the difference between be you and a, uh, That's and a libertarian. My value system. That's the difference right. between you and a libertarian. Exactly. We, we believe that the individual owns himself. You apparently believe that each individual is and ought to be the property of the community. Uh, the community, yes. I, I, I believe that we all have an obligation to each other. Okay, which well, at least we know where we stand. Uh, which is what our society, hopefully, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm is, horrified is by, your, by your position, well, but at I, least it, you've made it clear. The Sorry real, about the, that, Joe. I, I feel very strong about that. We, we are all responsible for each other. And, and, and to the extent says that who? we are, well... Says you, right? No, no. Says this is what our, our, uh, our Constitution and our, our so-called uh, No, ma'am. Our Constitution does on. not say anything there about are our certain... being responsible to one another. Well, it says, basically... This is, this is a construct made up by collectivists. Well, I, I think that in the U.S., the systems that we have in place are systems that are there to hopefully uh, protect all of us who are consider ourselves 
Americans. But there is that no is such society. thing. There is a Bill of Rights in this country, but there is no Bill of Responsibilities, nor should there be. I, w I do not want to have my responsibilities imposed upon me by somebody who thinks she knows better than I do, which is what I think your legislation is about. Well, the, the, that uh, I, I, I can understand how you are opposed to my legislation, but m for what I am trying to do, what I would like to see happen in this state is that we, the state legislature, uh, in concert with the, the uh, uh, as, as my legislation would require, the state uh, uh, government, the, the, uh, um, the governor's cabinet, health commissioner, uh, mental health commissioner, uh, uh, to come together to develop an education commission. I'm glad to see that you're looking out for me and my children because I, I certainly can't do it myself. Uh, well, uh, can Ms. I just Ms. Say Mary, why aren't the Republicans on board with this altruistic uh, initiative? Republicans are very no, much well, on board with Well, what I would this, say actually. is that um, a village can't take care of a child. A, a, a child needs to be in a family unit and that is where their nurturing, their, their care is going to be given. To say that society is just going to, is going to take care of children is just it's just a, a false. Um, I said we can create it, it, an not, environment where families. It can't be implemented. It can't be implemented. Children. But need, how do you? You seem what to be implying do, that the ch each child belongs more to the state than to the don't parents. Don't have a stable family. Then what do you do? Well, and that's why we have the foster care family, exactly. and, and that's very difficult. Absolutely. But, and, and but you seem to be suggesting that any child club, immediately no, belongs more churches. to the state than to the individual parent. Is, is that what you're saying? We would hope not. We would hope not. But we certainly don't want to be a state that ignores the needs of our children. Else. There what are, are we for? There what is are the purpose? hundreds and it can hundreds be, of not-for-profit organizations. It can be done in ways that, other than legislatively. I think is well, what most were, is what we're saying. Uh, by the way, there is a bill that is federally uh, uh, introduced at the federal level. I might have known in the Senate, <laughs> which I'm very excited about. I want to tell people about. Okay, it. well, I'm afraid we don't it's have time for that. We've got to wrap up. And so, uh, on and this, ma'am, I'm sorry, we have got to wrap up. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back with another edition of Hard Fire before you know it. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> free or die. Live free or die. Hard Fire is funded in part by the Libertarian Party of New York. Catering for the cast and crew of Hard Fire is generously provided by Da Vincenzo Restaurant. 256 Prospect Park West, Brooklyn, New York, 11215, 718-369-3590, www.davincenzorestaurant.com.